Hi, this is Judith Karakshani and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 155 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of a challenging balloon uncrossable CTO. The patient had diabetes mellitus for many years and was referred for PCI of an LAD CTO. The LAD had an occlusion with an ambiguous proximal cap at distal to the takeoff of a large diagonal vessel. The distal vessel was diffusely diseased and was filling via septal collaterals from the right coronary artery. Based on this anatomy, we decided to do intravascular ultrasound to confirm the location of the proximal cap, and then if it could be confirmed, do undergrade wire escalation. If it didn't work, go retrograde through the septal collaterals, and if that didn't work, do undergrade dissection and reentry. So IVUS did confirm about the position of the proximal cap. We were actually able to advance a microcatheter and then uh, perform a small injection distal to the origin of the diagonal that helped clarify the location of the vessel. And then did multiple wire attempts with um, a polymer jacket wires and a Gaia second, but unfortunately we could not uh, advance past the area of occlusion. As a result, we decided to switch to retrograde crossing. This is a workhorse guide wire. It's actually a Spectre workhorse guide wire that went through the septal collateral and actually successfully crossed into the true lumen through the septal collateral. So very quick uh, crossing with a standard workhorse guide wire. We did have some difficulty, however, advancing the microcatheter through the septal collateral. And these are the potential actions for when the microcatheter will not cross after guide wire crossing through a collateral. Usually changing the microcatheter or um, dilating the collateral with a 1.0 balloon can help. Sometimes getting extra support, for example, with a guide extension can help as well. If everything fails, another option is to use the retrograde wire for true lumen crossing, something that would be, however, quite challenging given we have a workhorse wire. Use the retrograde wire as, wire as a marker for undergrade crossing or use another collateral. In this particular case, we just changed to a different microcatheter. This is a Kerval, and that microcatheter was able to successfully cross, and now we have an injection through the microcatheter. We then tried several guide wires for retrograde crossing, Pilot 200, Gaia 3rd with difficulty, eventually a highly penetrating wire, this is a Warrior, it's a 14 gram stiff tip guide wire. This wire successfully uh, found its way and crossed towards the proximal true lumen. Whenever we have retrograde crossing in an LED or CERC CTO, it is critical to ensure that the retrograde wire does not go in the subintimal space, because if it does that, then there is the possibility of shutting down the circumflex or the LED when standing is being performed. So in this particular case, we did intravascular ultrasound to confirm that the guide wire is in true lumen, and indeed this is the retrograde guide wire, and it is in the proximal true lumen. So we did have successful retrograde to undergrade true lumen crossing. Unfortunately, the retrograde uh, microcatheter could not cross more proximally, which would be our preferred strategy, so then we can switch the stiff wire for a softer one and advance it into the guide catheter. But fortunately, we were able to advance uh, a retrograde warrior into the undergrade guide catheter and then inflate a balloon next to it to increase the support and then deliver the retrograde microcatheter into the undergrade guide catheter. Unfortunately, there was so much resistance that we were unable to advance the retrograde microcatheter into the undergrade guide catheter. So what we have here is a balloon uncrossable lesion. And this is the algorithm, small balloons, more support, microcatheters, laser, atherectomy, or subintimal techniques. This is also the tipping technique. Here we have a retrograde wire into the undergrade guide, and we do know that we can intubate the proximal tip of the retrograde wire with an undergrade microcatheter that then could be advanced over this undergrade wire through the CTO. So that's what we did here. This is the tip in. We're advancing a turnpike microcatheter which successfully intubates the retrograde guide wire. 
And then we were hoping that the undergrade microcatheter would have a better chance of crossing to the CTO, but unfortunately that was not the case. The undergrade microcatheter could not cross through the lesion. We tried to do the same thing with the subfire balloon, which is the lowest profile balloon current available, but we were unable to do so. Again, multiple attempts, retrograde microcatheter, undergrade microcatheter. Unfortunately, neither of them could go through the area of occlusion, likely due to significant calcification. This is some of the problems we encountered. This is the turn pi gold. And we are spinning the microcatheter without having a wire go completely through because we have the retrograde wire partially in. And this is what happened to the proximal shaft. So ideally, always there should be a guide wire in the microcatheter while trying to rotate it. After multiple attempts, eventually we did lose the guide wire position. We did uh, the same steps again. We rewired and then uh, we were able to insert the retrograde wire into the guide catheter. We snared this time and then we have an externalized wire. So we thought having the strong support of an externalized system would be enough to be able to deliver equipment through. But once again, we had the same problem, either in the retrograde or the undergrade direction. We could not cross the lesion despite using small balloons, microcatheters. What is the next step? We tried laser. This is the laser catheter. There's the multiple runs with a 0.9 millimeter coronary laser. But unfortunately, this could not happen. We got more support. This is a guide extension. Once again, could not cross even with a small 1.0 millimeter balloon. During all those attempts, what happened is that the retrograde wire became deformed and at some point it became stuck and we had to remove all the equipment. And this is what came out. We do see some piece of tissue, potential intima, who got us worried, but the patient was stable throughout all this without any problems. So what to do next? We now have a kind of obliteration of the retrograde crossing. Uh, the collaterals uh, don't seem to supply the LED anymore. So we decided to do a final attempt using undergrade dissection reentry. This is uh, a turnpike spiral microcatheter. This is a Gladius Mongo polymer jacketed guide wire. This was advanced to the mid LED and then we tried to re-enter using the Stingray balloon, double blind stick and swap, sticking on both sides and switching for a polymer jacket wire. Unfortunately, that was not successful. So we advanced the Stingray a little further down and repeated the process. Once again, stiff wire and then a polymer jacket wire. And then after doing this, um, we were actually able to advance the Pilot 200 in what appeared to be the course of the vessel. After doing that, we were able to advance easily a balloon over the wire, predilated, and now we did restore under grid flow. There is extensive dissection in the LAD at the site of previous crossing attempts. So long uh, drag looting stand was placed all the way to the proximal LAD. And then uh, IVUS was done to confirm that a good result was achieved. And we did have a good stent um, expansion and stent strata position, which illustrates one of the benefits of the sexual reentry in balloon uncrossable and undilatable lesions is that they can not only cross with equipment, but also you do have better chance of expanding the lesion. So in this case, we had to go through the entire algorithm. We tried everything, including small balloons, getting more support, different microcatheters. We did not try the wire cutting technique, but we tried laser. We did not try atherectomy, but then subintimal techniques were eventually successful in crossing the lesion and expanding it. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, balloon and crossable cases can be very challenging, those lesions it is important to have an algorithm in mind. In this case, maybe we persevered for too long trying to cross after we had uh, uh, externalized the guide wire in the retrograde or the undergrade direction. Potentially, if we had switched to an ADR, undergrade dissection reentry approach earlier on, we might have been able to complete the case faster. But what ended up being the key to success was losing everything losing the retrograde wire position and forcing us to go undergrade sexual reentry, which eventually led to successful completion of the case. Thank you very much.